Hey guys, this is Elias with Softly, and today we're gonna import WooCommerce variable products using an Excel file and WPO import. Now, uh, let's get started by uploading the file we're gonna use. Alright, now we need to select WooCommerce products from this dropdown, and I don't have any products here on this side, so let's select new items and continue to step 2. Alright. So the first thing we notice here on step two is that WPL import says it's detecting 2038 nodes. Now, let me show you real quick here. Uh, each node is basically a row. Now you can see here that we have 2039 rows minus the header column that gives us 2038. So this is the first thing we need to check here on step two. Uh, so this is good because WPL import is detecting all of the rows we have in the import file. Now, now the second thing we need to check is whether WPL import is detecting all of the columns or not. And so we have here the SQ, parent SQ, name, short description, description, stock, stock status, regular price, sell price, categories, uh, images, uh, size and color. Well, uh, those are the exact same columns we have here. Uh, so since this is good, we could just continue to step 3. However, you will notice that this doesn't actually look like an Excel file and this is fine because WPL import is actually converting our Excel file into an XML. And this is very cool because among other things, it gives us the ability to use XPath expressions to filter out some content here on step 2. Now to do this, let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, until you find the manage filtering options. Now let's open this tab up and you will see here a UI that contains element, rule and value. Now uh, the other elements here are the expat and if you don't know what expat is, don't really worry about it. You can use the UI like we're gonna use. But if you do know expat, then you can just write here your own expat expressions and they will work too. Now uh, let's proceed and from these 2,038 products, I'm gonna import only the ones that are hoodies. Now to achieve this in this example, I'm gonna take the categories element and I want to import only the products that have the word hoodie in the element. Now let's do that by selecting here the categories element. Now for the rule, uh, we have several options here, but I'm gonna choose contains and in the value I'm going to type in hoodies. Let's add this rule and apply the filter. Now you'll see that WPL import has generated automatically an expat expression and this is great uh, and here you can see that we no longer have 2038 rows, now we have 390. So these 390 nodes are just hoodies. So this is great uh, and since we're done here let's continue to step 3 where we just need to drag and drop the elements uh, from this right panel into the import fields we want them to go. Now, uh, you'll notice here we have the title, the description, the short description, and if I open here the WooCommerce add-on tab, you will see the product data. Now, uh, this is very similar to when we're creating a product here in WooCommerce. Let me show you real quick. We have the title, the description, the short description, and the product data. Now, the idea behind this is that you feel this a little bit familiar, so you can just easily work your way through. Now, uh, let's start dragging and dropping the elements. Uh, we have here the name element, and I want this name element to be the title. So I just click here, drag, and drop it in the field box I want it to go. Uh, it's really that easy, guys. So let's do the same with the description and the short description. All right, now I'm not limited uh, in any form here. You can do pretty much whatever you want. For example, I could add another element even with ecstatic data. Let's say here SQ and let's drag and drop a second element. This is good. Let's make this bold and preview. And as you can see, it's working. Now, uh, as I said before guys, there is really no limit to what you can do here. So let's just continue with our import and if you have any questions at all, just check out the links in the description below and you will be taken to our documentation or you can also uh, contact our support team and we'll be more than happy to help you out. 
Now let's continue. Uh, we have here the WooCommerce add-on tab. And again, guys, this is very similar to when you're creating a product manually in WooCommerce. So as such, we just need to do, well, the same as if we were doing that. Uh, let's just select here variable products from the product type dropdown. You will see that the variations tab shows up. And again, this is the exact same thing that happens here. See? Now let's drag and drop the elements, starting with the SQ. All right. Now we have the regular price and sell price, and those are here. Uh, sell price. All right. Now it's always a good idea to hit preview and see if the prices are right. All right. So they are good. Uh, they are the same as in the import file. So let's dismiss this and continue. Now these settings, um, I'm going to leave them as they are by default. Uh, but again, guys, you can just uh, change this to whatever works for you. Uh, now here on the inventory tab, uh, I need to enable the manage stock option because I have the stock element here. Now let's do that and drag and drop the stock element into the stock quantity field. Now for the low stock threshold, uh, you can place here whatever number uh, works for you. This is a basic WooCommerce stuff. So I'm going to choose two. That's good. Uh, now for the stock status, we could just let WP all import uh, decide automatically whether a product is on stock or not uh, by checking its stock levels. But in this example, we won't be needing to do that because we actually have here a stock status element. Uh, so let's use this by clicking here on the set with expat option. Uh, the values we need are in stock, out of stock and on back order. Now we have here the out of stock. Uh, element this is good and we have here an element that's in stock so with this WPL import will be able to use this element correctly let's just drag and drop it like so and it will work now these settings I'm gonna leave them as they are by default uh, I'm gonna skip the shipping and link products tab because I don't have that information here on the Excel file so let's jump into the attributes tab now, this attributes tab is very important because you can create variable products without attributes. Uh, WooCommerce won't allow you to do so. So I have here size and color. So let's add here a new row and type in here size and color. Then drag and drop the values like so. And this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, you are welcome to play around with these options. Uh, here on the advanced tab, you have more flexibility to set them with expat or whatnot, but it's really not necessary, guys. Uh, in WPL import, you'll notice that you can either run a very simple import or a really complex one. Um, we won't limit you uh, in that regard. Now, we have here the ability to link all of the variations, and this is, again, the exact same feature you will find in WooCommerce. And what this will do is to create a variation from every possible combination of attributes. Now, this is not what we want to do because here on the Excel file we're using, we have all of the variations we want to create. Uh, you can see all of these guys uh, are actual variations of this parent product, just in different colors and sizes. Now, to be able to upload all of these products as a variable product, we need to tell WPL import how are they related. Now we do this in the variations tab. So let's jump into it. And here we have several options because not all import files are the same. Uh, if you click on each one of them, you'll notice that in the title describes a scenario. And in the example image below, uh, well, it's pretty much a visual representation of that scenario. For example, we have here uh, this example that says all variations for a particular product have the same title as the parent product. Now you can see here on the image below that all of these products uh, have the same title. This is the parent product and all of these are the variations. Same with the lamp chops right here. Now, if your file structure looks like this, then you just need to drag and drop the title like so, and WPL import will understand this and generate variations from that. Now, uh, we have other options here, and it's important to read the titles carefully, as I said before, because in this example, uh, we have a very similar one. 
all variations for a particular product that have the same title, but there are no parent products. So here, on the example image below, you will see that we don't have any parent products. We only have uh, variations. So again, it's important to read the titles carefully. Uh, you can also uh, import child XML elements. And we do have a video here. You can click on it and it will explain in more depth how this option works. Now, the option that describes more accurately the file structure we're using is this first one, because we do have a SKU element and a parent SKU. You can see that here on the Excel file, we have the SKU where each element have a unique value for each row. And here on the parent SKU element, we have a value that's referencing an SKU uh, here. And in this case, it's referencing the parent. Now, uh, let's run and drop the elements here. Uh, we have the SKU, right? And the parent SKU. Now with this WPL import, we'll understand how to link all of the variations from our file. Now uh, let's continue. We'll leave these settings as they are by default, because again, the default values work for us. And with this, I believe we're done with the WooCommerce add-on tab. We have the general tab, this is good. The inventory tab is looking good too. Shipping and link products uh, are skipped because we don't have the information in the import file. The attributes tab looks good and the variations are set up correctly. Now uh, let's scroll down and continue with the images. Now here in the images, you will be able to import images to both the parent and the variation. Uh, we have here the chest kangaroo duty and this is a parent product that has a bunch of images. Now, uh, if we click here, you will see the uh, same Chaz Kangaroo hoodie, but in size L and color black. Now, if I uh, click here and check out this image, you will see that it's different to the images we're using here. So yeah, let's just continue with the import and you will see what I mean real soon. Let's just drag and drop the image element here. Uh, now for this image element, you will see here that we're using a semicolon to separate those images. So we need to adjust that setting here. Uh, by default is a comma, but we can change that. Let's set it as a semicolon and hit preview to make sure they're good. Now let's run the test. All right, so the three images were successfully downloaded. Now that's good. Let's dismiss this and continue with the import. Uh, we'll let these settings as they are by default, but you can hover on the question mark and it will briefly explain what this option does. Now the custom fields tab, we're just gonna skip it and jump into the taxonomy tab. Now here in the taxonomy tab, we need to enable the product categories because we have that element here. Uh, so let's select the third option because we have a hierarchical structure in our categories here, we have a greater than symbol and a pipe separating different hierarchy groups. Now let's import this in WooCommerce by enabling this first option. And then we need to separate each category group via symbol. Now let's drag and drop this. All right, and hit preview. You can see that WPL import is separating each element correctly via a greater than symbol and each hierarchy group correctly too by using the pipe. Now, uh, this is looking good. So let's scroll down. We have here other product options that are basically some WordPress standard values. Uh, those are post status, post dates, comments, trackbacks, uh, this look, the author, um, and we're just gonna skip all of this because the default values will work just fine for us. Now here we have the function editor, which is probably the most powerful feature in WPL import because it will allow you to run PHP functions on your data and do pretty much whatever you want with it. Now be sure to check out the links in the description below because they will take you to our documentation where you can find more info on running PHP function, taxonomies, and pretty much everything we have set up here in step three. Now, uh, let's continue with our import by clicking here on the continue to step four button. All right. And now that we're here, uh, we need to select a unique identifier. Now you can read this and it will explain a little bit further about what the unique identifier is and how it works. Uh, but basically we need to select an element or combination of elements that are unique for each row in our import file. 
Now for the most cases we can just click here on the auto detect button and WPL import will just select that for us. Uh, now let's continue. These settings will leave them as they are by default, but again, you're welcome to hover on the question mark and it will explain what they do. Now we won't be using the scheduling options in this example, but you should check out the links in the description below as this is a very requested and very cool feature in WPL import because it will allow you to schedule your import and run them automatically whenever you want. Now this all looks good, so let's just continue and run our import. Now, as I said, we have 390 rows, but we won't end up with that many products here once this is done, because most of these products, as I showed you before, are variants from the same product. We're gonna end up with 25 products, so that's good. Let's just give it a minute here, so the import finishes. Uh, shouldn't take too long now. All right, now WPL import says the import is complete. Let's check out the products to see if that's right. All right, uh, so we have here 25 products. Uh, this is good because this is what we expected. Uh, all of the products seem to be here, so that's great. Uh, let's just check out how they look in the front end. Cool, so we have this beautiful website and all of the images seem to be here. We have here the price and sell price, the title, the categories. Uh, now let's check this product up. Uh, we have here all of the data, the SKU, the categories, the prices, the description, that's good. Let's select one variation. And we have here the gray, blue, and yellow colors, so this is good. Now the SQ element we place is working too, and the attributes are looking good. Now let's see how this product looks in the edit product page. That's great. Uh, we have the images, the category tree is looking good. Uh, the stock management and quantity are looking good too. Now here on the variations, all of the variations have their own image, their own SQ, uh, the managed stock. And yeah, guys, this is what I meant when I said that each product will have their own image. As uh, you can see, these variations have their own image and the parent product have different ones. Now, uh, that's it, guys. This is uh, all of the data we have. Each element is in the right fields and that's good. And that's what we wanted. Uh, so yeah, that's how you import WooCommerce variable products using an Excel file and WPL import. Now, I really hope you liked this video and if you want to learn more about how to import or export other WooCommerce data like orders, product reviews and whatnot, just check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wpolimport.com. See you next time.